Sometimes we talk about how a lot of games out there don't really have endings. But one thing we don't talk a lot about is how some games have too many endings. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, 10 insane games with over a hundred endings. Before we get going, I, I, it's possible that I will spoil some things in this video. Just want people to know that right off. However, the nature of the sheer number of things we're talking about here makes it impossible to completely spoil anything. So yeah, there's some stuff here you probably could have discovered yourself, but it's not nearly the amount that it could be. However, I am uninterested in making three hour top 10 lists. Starting off with number 10, it's The Quarry. Supermassive's spiritual successor to Until Dawn has a ton of endings. In an interview with IGN, the director of the game claimed the game would have 186 different endings for these characters. At an obvious statement, that's a lot. Of course, it's not like the game actually has 186 individual endings or anything. It's more like if you took every possible selection of scenes that make up the ending of the quarry, there would be 186 unique variations. You guys know how this kind of stuff works, right? The quarry has a ton of junction points where where the player is asked to make a choice, and depending on what you do, it'll affect something. A character could die, you might lose an essential item that affects the way things happen for your character. There's a lot of different characters, so there's a lot of different potential outcomes. Most of them don't turn out that well for the characters, and there isn't really any true ending. It's possible to get through the story with the best possible outcome, but it is a horror game, so is that really how things are supposed to play out? Is everybody surviving and living happily ever after canon? I don't know. Resident Evil's been going on for quite a while. At number nine is Detroit Become Human. Quantic Dream has a pretty questionable track record in the past with narrative adventure games, but Detroit Become Human is generally regarded their best effort so far, and a big reason is just how reactive the game can be. There are a lot of different ways that each character's story can play out, and depending on your choices, it can lead to wildly different landing points. According to the Wikipedia, fans have counted, and I say counted because uh, there's not an official number, but they've counted 195 different possible variations for the endings. Of course, the differences can be pretty minor, but at least with this game, you see some pretty significant changes depending on the choices you make in the story. Uh, characters can die early, anti-heroes can become full-fledged bad guys. You can take my life. It doesn't matter anymore. My mission is to neutralize the leader of the Deviants, and I always accomplish my mission. There's some pretty interesting story routes to go down that just wouldn't be possible in most other games in this genre. They really tried to make it feel like your choices mattered in this game, and while it can be pretty laughable at spots and hopelessly melodramatic, at no point can you press X to Sean. I know people like giving Quantic Dream a lot of shit for the melodrama, but if I'm completely honest, I wouldn't want them any other way. They do branching stories right, and you gotta give them respect for that. And even though the stories don't necessarily completely land exactly how they're intended to in every single possible instance, a lot of the time they do. And when they don't, you get moments like the supermarket scene in Heavy Rain. Honestly, at this point in my life, I just kind of unironically love Quantic Dream. At number eight is Fallout 3, back in 2008 with the hype for Bethesda's newest RPG, Fallout 3 Reaching Critical Mass, Todd Howard guested on the official Xbox podcast and dropped a bomb saying the game would have over 200 endings. Specifically, he said that at the time there were 240 of them. Much hay was made about this seemingly absurdly high number, like the game will either take a bazillion years to finish or Todd Howard is just a dirty liar, but when you actually take a look at what the endings are, it, it makes Makes more sense. In reality, there's two endings in the original game. They expanded it with the Broken Steel expansion, but at first there really was just a good ending and a bad ending. Those are the only things that would actually affect the game world. All the variation comes with the epilogue, where the game would show a screen and the narrator would explain the outcome of various choices. You do different things in the game, you get different things in the epilogue. There is a pretty good amount of these too. If you take them all individually, it does add up to around 240 different variations, which sounds like a lot, 
but it's really a drop in the bucket compared to the upper limit of what's possible with this type of ending. Fallout 3 isn't a game where people would assume it has a lot of endings. If anything, the game is better known for how it used to severely limit player choice in the ending. It's a game where it forces players to sacrifice themselves for basically no reason, even when there's a perfectly rational alternative. No, I'm sorry, my companion, but uh, no. We all have our own destinies, and yours culminates here. In reality, the ending options are very limited, but if you factor in the many different quest outcomes and choices that can change what's in the epilogue, the game actually has more endings than anything else out there. The important takeaway from this list is that bigger doesn't automatically mean better. It's not to say Fallout 3's ending is bad, just that the lots of variations that most players would never notice or care about are just that. And number seven is The Witcher 3. How Witcher 3 concludes is extremely similar to Fallout. There's three main ending options, but depending on your choices, endings can vary pretty wildly. The three major factors that come into play when determining your ending are Geralt's relationship with Ciri. Uh, it basically determines whether your ending is going to be pretty good or very bad. Next is the state of the realms, specifically regarding who wins the war and who ends up ruling Skellige. There is a lot of variety here, especially regarding the state of the war. A lot of seemingly minor decisions can have an outsized effect on the state of the world during the ending. The last, least important thing that affects the ending is your choices for quests and your relationship with various characters. Basically the same as Fallout, where each individual is given a line about their fate. Yes. I, I just wanted a moment to talk to you. Before... Before it begins. Chin up. The hunt's weakened. We've got... No, no more about the battle. Just... Hold me. And like Fallout, these things can change actually quite a bit depending on what you've done and the choices that you've made. I can't find what I would call a concrete number anywhere, but I know all the possible endings are easy. This is more than a hundred of them, all right? I don't know if anybody out there's actually looked at every variable or done the math, but it's safe to assume that the final number is actually much higher than a hundred. There's quite a bit of story the game drops on you at the end of it, so there's a lot of different outcomes. Personally, I find the various endings uh, to The Witcher 3 more satisfying than the other games on this list. I still got burned on the Siri relationship stuff though. You miss one conversation with her and suddenly it's the end of the world. And number six is Star Ocean, second evolution R. In my mind, multiple endings I usually associate with computer RPGs, player choices, those games bread and butter, so it's usual to see a JRPG with a lot of different endings. I am cheating a bit here because the game has exactly 100 endings, not 100 plus, but cut me some slack. That's one away from being 100 plus. Let's just add in you pressing the power button as an ending, all right? One of the possible endings out there is that you just stop playing and that's it. It just sort of ends. There, 101. So the original Star Ocean 2, which came out on the PlayStation 1 back in 1998, had 87 total endings, and this isn't with variations or title cards, it just had that many unique endings. They were short, and the differences didn't always matter that much, but there's no caveats here. These endings are all actually different. I guess the publisher thought, ah, that's not really enough. So when they re-released the game on PlayStation Portable, they added 13 more, rounding it out to 100. How these endings work is totally bizarre. Basically, at the start of the game, you choose to play as either Claude or Rena. That's the first major choice. From there, depending on what you do, you increase or decrease a party member's emotional level, which whatever party member has the highest gets a unique ending. If it's too low for anyone, there's a unique ending. And on top of that, there are also some unique endings that you can get too, and all the endings are different depending on who your player character is. It's a bizarre system that is not really explained in the game and if you want to see all the endings all you can do is play the game from scratch and carefully follow a guide to get your preferred outcome i don't know how they kept track of this internally if i'm completely frank i can't see Star Ocean 2 is a weird game even for a JRPG. The whole relationship system isn't even the craziest part. It's just one of the most infuriating things if you want to end the game with a specific pairing.
At number five, the 25th Ward, the Silver Case, Suda51, the madman behind No More Heroes and Killer7, is maybe at his most deranged with this game. And you can tell by the title, that's not the title for a game. It starts off as a visually interesting but seemingly straightforward adventure game where you play as a cop investigating a series of grisly murders, and it goes off the deep end into fourth wall breaking insanity. By the conclusion, the entire story starts feeling like a big joke pulled on the player, an elaborate troll disguised as a video game and nowhere is that more evident than the game's deranged conclusion. At the end, you're rewarded with an ending, a uh, hundred different ending. You want your choices to matter, right? So pick an ending. Most of these things are jokes, they barely get a sentence or two, but if you want the true ending, you have to go through every single one of them, which can take hours. It should come as no surprise, the true ending is intentionally unsatisfying too. Even for Suda, this game is wild. Probably his most experimental, honestly. It's easily one of the most off-putting and fascinating games I've ever seen. It's one of those games that's about as intentionally alienating as possible. As a game, it's not really fun, but it's a hell of an experience, endings included. And number four is Reventure. I've been slacking on the endings of the last two games on this list, so let's bring it back on track with a fun little indie game where getting all the endings is the goal. Reventure's whole deal is that it's a bite-sized game you can finish in a few minutes if you play it normally, but the real fun is going around and seeing all the weird and bad endings you can trigger for yourself. The game has a hundred separate endings and one final secret hidden ending that unlocks after completing all the others. The graphics are primitive and the gameplay is basic, but Reventure is deceptively simple. After the first few choices, the possibilities start getting more and more complicated and after a while it gets legitimately difficult to figure out how to progress and get more endings. You'll want to see these too, the endings really are the highlight. Most of them are just you dying in some laughable way, but there's a lot of creativity with these things and some endings might seem minor and end up being kind of shockingly elaborate, but certain endings can change your starting condition and they can be used to find even more endings. If you're looking for a game that no BS actually has 100 endings for real, then Reventure may be the closest thing you're going to see on this list. I'm just going to spoil that now. Most games struggle to have one decent ending, so this game having legitimately over 100 is really impressive, even if most are kind of simple. <laughs> And number three is Until Dawn. Sure, the quarry had an impressive 186 ending variations, but Supermassive's first game actually has a few more. At the time, the devs claimed there were 256 total endings, and this game FAQ's forum user named Forsuthius was kind enough to do the math. Yes, I'm crediting an eight-year-old forum post. What are you gonna do about it? He did the math, why do it again? There's an ending with zero survivors and then eight different variations depending on who survived. There's really just three endings that change depending on who survives. Some people survive, nobody survives. It's all different. The police interviews given over the ending credits can change pretty drastically depending on which characters live and in what state they're in. So I can't really confirm if there's actually 256 numbers, but Forsuthius did the math eight years ago. I don't know, at this point I'm kind of just wanting to say his name, Forsuthius. <laughs> what a great name. And number two is Baldur's Gate 3. Before release, Larian claimed there were 17,999 different ending variations in Baldur's Gate 3. Not 100, not 1,000, but nearly 18,000. Not quite 18,000 though, which is interesting. Why not do one more ending, guys? Anyway, I've finished the game. There's no way that number is accurate. Maybe if you count every possible piece of armor people are wearing during the ending cutscene. I don't know, because unlike most other games on this list with huge ending counts, this one doesn't have any narration or title cards at the end explaining what happened after your adventure. It just ends, which I'm fine with, by the way. The whole title card ending thing is getting a bit old. I think it's fine when it just sort of ends. 
It's pretty good. It's all right. It wasn't great, but it was fine. I'm really cross-pollinating the Sunny reference here, guys. Give me some credit. There's still a lot of room for variation in what happens in the climax and ending, so I guess the endings are easily more than 100, but not 18,000. To be fair, this is only a few months after the game came out, and it sounds like Larian is tweaking the ending, so maybe the title cards and narration will make a return, and if that's the case, I could see the amount of endings closer to what Larian originally said, because there's a lot of reactivity and choices you can make. It's an impressively reactive ending with a lot of changes anyways, but that original number just isn't possible in the game's current state. You have earned your place amongst the legends of the Sword Coast. You are the saviors of Baldur's Gate. And finally is Fallout New Vegas. I've talked about a lot of games on this list, relying on static images and narration to add variety to the ending to make it feel like your choices mattered. A lot of games have a huge variety of possible endings due to this, but nothing out there comes close to the numbers Fallout New Vegas pushes. This game gets a lot of praise for how reactive its endings can be. It's a really small touch, but the way the game has characters narrate their own fate adds a lot of gravity to what's basically a picture and some text. Also, it's excellently written. There's a ton of it, too. According to Reddit user Nessa Magic, whose name in convention game isn't quite on the level of a Forsuthius, but apparently gets the math game pretty well. The base game has, seriously, more than a quadrillion different possible endings. The final tally was 1 quadrillion 113 trillion 652 billion 592 million 640 thousand ending, which is ridiculous. And it's only able to be like that because there's a lot of different cards in narration when you beat the game. There's so much reactivity and variety to the possible outcomes. No other game has gotten even close to how many possible conclusions New Vegas has. And yeah, once again, they're not completely unique endings. They're different combinations of a lot of unique pieces. But given how high that number is, it's a lot of unique writing done by Obsidian. The really bizarre thing is that like two thirds of those endings come from siding with the Legion, the faction most people never join. You got to respect their attention to detail though. In RPGs, just knowing something's possible is important. And the many, many possible endings in New Vegas are just another reason the game remains so highly regarded today. And that's all for today. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription, so click subscribe. Don't forget to enable all notifications, and as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter, at FalconTheHero, and we'll see you next time right here on GameRanks.